news from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe Watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Did someone give the order not to intercept? And if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. Where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. The Bushes and Bin Ladens. Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Omega Presents. Well, we have a lot going on in the world. The economic meltdown is on almost every single show you turn on, no matter what. We've got a comedy show coming up later this week. It's going to have an episode featuring the economy. But 9-11 uh, is the start of it all. I mean, it. the same people that are doing the 9-11 fiasco are doing the economy crash down. Yeah, probably go back to JFK assassination, too. The I same should, people it, even before that, right? This is Tim from uh, the 
PDX 911 Truth here in Portland, and uh, I still haven't joined their group, but I have. Uh, well, their T-shirts right down there. Yeah, we well, meet right every, in front of me, I guess. We <laughs> meet every Wednesday at Laughing Horse Books, Tenth and Burden side on the east side. So, okay, seven and, o'clock. Uh, well, as you can see behind me, you, there's a call-in number, live call-in number. If you have any particular questions or comments, feel free to call in right away. We're going to just be covering some of these new books. We got. I told, talked about this one last week. Uh, this isn't all that new, but it's. I just bought it myself. It's the 9-11 and American Empire, Intellectuals Speak Out, David Ray Griffin. But this one here is a follow-up on the uh, New Pearl Harbor, which was the, the classic, the, the, what do you call it, the, the must-read edition. But this is the revisited, New Pearl Harbor revisited. It has several, five, about five new items in it. First part of December, I think December 2nd, he'll be in Olympia, Washington. Giving a speech. Oh, yeah, and hey, Ralph Nader is going to be in town Monday. That's just the 20th. Yeah, that's going to be at the Baghdad Theater, and it's going to be at 7.30. Yeah, now so, we don't have a, a, a lot of so, difference in our politics. I mean, Republican or Democrat, Democrat, Republican, they're interchangeable. Right. Both of them are following orders from people that don't have our interests at heart. Um, but finally, if you want to hear some politics or some straight speaking from people who do care we also the constitution party Par has right constitution party this coming tuesday chuck baldwin he's running for the presidency and he's going to be at the tiger library at 6 30 to 9 o'clock and that's at 13500 southwest hall boulevard tiger and both ralph nader and chuck baldwin they're they've gone on record that they want a new investigation 9-11 so that's right. Um, it's too bad Barbara isn't here, but did you see last week's show or last last episode? Barbara yes. from 9-11 Truth started outlining the bill that these guys are putting together to force a new 9-11 investigation. Uh, they're trying to make get through the legal end of things. Good luck, yeah. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> but, uh, but We hope it happens. Well, how many times have people said, well, how come we don't hear about anything? You know, how come... If, if it's such a vast conspiracy, how come people haven't come forward? Well, actually, dozens of people have come forward. How come you haven't heard about it is the better question. And, you know, it's time for people to start calling their media. I mean, it's been time for so long. But, I mean, when, when, do, you, when do you get outraged? Where, where are you going to draw the line? You know, isn't it about time that you actually got news that, that you know, when something happens, don't you think, that the news people ought to tell you about it? Well, I mean, we've had all these discoveries that absolutely clinch the fact that 9-11 was an inside job. It's not conjecture. It's absolutely provable. Why don't you know it? You know, I, I'm speaking to the choir for a lot of people, but when I ask the question, why don't you know it, I'm assuming that there's somebody that might have stumbled across this show. You know, that's one of our problems. It, the people watching the show are people that already know what I have to say. What, I mean, what do you think we should do about that? How do we get people to watch the show that maybe don't agree? That's a hard <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, well, we got the call number up there, 503-288-4442 and 4448. If you have any suggestions or ideas how we can communicate. I mean, I, I've got DVDs and books. The whole idea of presenting these on the front of my display every single show is to get the idea that, you know, it's not true that there's no information. If you are one of those people that thinks there is not any information, you're either deliberately hiding from it, or you're just one of the sheep, you know, going, right. meh, meh, there's no information, meh. Yeah, we should, you know? if you disagree, they should call in and... Right, if you disagree, us. call in and tell us yeah. why you disagree, and maybe ch try to change... Change, Change our, us if yeah, we're wrong. If, if we're wrong, how are we wrong? Yeah. And, you know, calling us up and telling us to go back to some other country or something yeah, being, doesn't help. I, I'm sure you've been called communist, right? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> now it's terrorist. No, terrorist. Yeah, and, it used to be right. communist. When I was protesting the Vietnam War, it mm -hmm. was, you're a communist and anti-American. Right. No, I just believe in, in the law. As I was growing up, they told us what it was to be an American. They told us why America was better than anybody else. And all those things that made us better than anybody else, it turns out that we're the expert in the world at doing those horrible things that the other people were supposed to be the ones to 
the only ones that did it. Mm -hmm. All those things that Russia supposedly did, imprisoning their people without charges, torture, you know, on and on. We're the world's leading experts on that now. Yeah, it's uh, sad, isn't it? It's, it's <laughs> a shame, you know. It makes yeah. me want to cry. I my night, I lost my naivety step by step as I grew up, you know. And I'm not so sure it's a good thing. Oh, hey, we do have a call. Let's see if we can get him through. <laughs> hey, we got feedback. That's a close. That's a good start. <laughs> hey, make sure the the uh, talk back. Uh, I mean the. Uh, the phone patch amplifier has to be turned on. Make sure that's on or we won't hear anything. But it, we've got technical de technical difficulties here. I'm okay. I'll hang on. Oh, there. I hear you. Can okay. You, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I muted my TV, too, so I hope I won't be back. Great, great. Well, I, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, you said, you know, contact the media and try to get some attention brought on, on this. This is stuff that, you know, the everyday Joe is kind of talking about. Uh, now more than ever, I mean, it's almost kind of to a depressing point, really, because that's all anyone really talks about is, uh, you know, the fact that we all know that it was an inside job. We know that there's, you know, all the, you know, things going on, but, you know, how could we state something where they have no choice but to pay attention? <laughs> I, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's a good that's the hardest part. I know people are talking about it, but they're not paying attention. Yeah, some, we got to do something where, you know, it's such a big event that the news covers it or there's, you know, be there, be square type of thing, you know. And Yeah, you can always call in talk shows, right? Yeah, that's, that's one, one thing. Way. Oh, yeah, and uh, Richard Gage from, well, where's the camera? <laughs> there we are. Uh, AE911 Truth says to call up everybody that you can think of that has an architect's license, every architecture firm. And give them the uh, website of AE nine eleven Truth so that they can get clued in to some of this, some of the issues if they haven't been. So, do you find most of your friends and relatives are clued in? What's go what's going on? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I, I coach little league, and believe it or not, one day I just overheard a couple of the parents talking about stuff, and you know, a lot of it had to do with uh, the nine eleven stuff. But you know, it, it it goes deep. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about this, and one of the guys that I'm working for, he's uh, but he gave me a, a, a sheet of paper about three months ago and said, uh, look out, there's going to be a stock market crash. Ah. He said, it's probably going to be in September. This is what they're saying. And, you know, honestly, I didn't even want to read the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It hurts too much. Uh, luckily, I don't have a lot of, you know, ties there. But I know, you know, my wife's uh, father has lost $17,000 in the last uh, three weeks. Oh, yeah. His, you know, pension fund, his uh, 401k. Um, and that's all they have now. He's retired. Um, so, I mean, it was weird to see, you know, that he was absolutely right. Now, it's probably pretty predictable, and a lot of people, you know, could have said, oh, yeah, we're going to have a stock market crash. But sure enough, there, there it went. Huh. So, yeah, and the thing is, if anybody thinks that this latest fix has actually fixed anything, uh-uh, you're going to see a couple more at least crashes. And, and, you know, nothing they've done so far will do anything to stop the final collapse. They haven't addressed any of the problems. All they did is, you know, reimburse the people that cheated us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, excuse me, I'm sorry. And um, it, it's pretty sad to see, you know, that so many people really know what's going on. And so, <laughs> yeah, either we, we feel like we can't do anything or we just plain don't. Well, how many okay. people have you kept, you know, you hear all your life people say all their lives, we're in a democracy. This is a democracy. This, well, you know, even if we know it's technically a republic. representative republic. You, whatever it is, how come an 80% majority wanting a reinvestigation of 9-11, how come they can't get it? 80%? That's the biggest, you know. <laughs> oh, well. well. It's just like everything. Um, you know, the, the, the minority rules. And it's, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, but it, there's going to be something, I mean, it, that we could do. At this point, there's so many people talking about it. Let's let's get together. Let's do something. I'm, I'm a parent, you know, and that's what scares me the worst. If I was a, a single guy, should I? I wouldn't worry about it as much, but I got kids, and uh, it's too late. No, I got them already. I can't do, so, you know, I got to do something. I can't just well at the and, at the risk know. of being branded a nutcase. Uh, I try to bring in 9/11 into whatever conversation I'm having. I mean, within limits. I was right. I told the story a couple episodes ago about when I went to the bank, and we're sitting about 20 feet away from the great big steel vault, which with its massive doors, it's swung open, and uh, 
you know, I we were done with our paperwork and just chit chatting at the end there, and I turned to the lady, and and said, uh, they're gonna, you know, beef up that door, aren't they? And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, after 9/11, we know how vulnerable steel is to air to airplane fuel. Somebody walks in here with a five-gallon can of fuel, they've got your safe open, you know. And and she stopped and thought that can't happen. And I said, you know, you're right. Now apply that to the rest of 9/11, and and you'll understand what's wrong with 9/11. I have an idea, Bill. Why don't you um, sponsor his little league team? <laughs> with nine eleven well, shirts. Sponsoring the Little League team <laughs> takes money and I need him to sponsor my show. <laughs> that'd, that'd be hilarious. With little kids with the nine elevens and inside job shirts. That'd yeah, there we go. You know the funny thing is it's gonna take stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. gonna have to be us just blatantly talking about it all the time and you know, you'd be surprised just how many people really understand what's going on. Uh, well I'll buy nine eleven t shirts for everybody in your team if you can get them to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> That's their uniform, they have to wear them. <laughs> that's, that's a done deal. There you go. <laughs> as long as they're cool like that, I like the black and white. That would be tough. Yeah, this All is right. the this is Alex Jones' website that did this one. You know, I watch him quite a bit now too. He's you know at first I I hesitate to watch these types of shows because you know well Alex they're a little depressing, but but you know it it's, it makes me feel a tiny bit better to know that there's a few other people that are uh, feeling the same way we are. Yeah. And, you know who knows maybe you know you know if, if we do get together on this. Maybe we can make a difference. You never know. You know, I think that would be one of those things that actually gets the news attention. If, right. if all of a sudden a Little League team, there's probably something in your uh, bylines <laughs> that prevent you from doing politics or something. Well, yeah. Everybody likes me right now. I kind of want to keep it that way. <laughs> right, good, right. Yeah, good point. <laughs> but, you know, and that's, the, like you said, at the risk of uh, sounding like a crackpot, we talk about these things. Um, that's the danger is that, you know, you can literally be considered some kind of crackpot or some, you know. Well, when people start... At the very least, a depressing guy, because honestly, <laughs> I complain about this guy I'm working for all the time. Um, but uh, because, it, 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 you know, thinking about this stuff depresses me, and now I'm afraid he's going to watch this show, and I'm thinking, oh, God, he's going to know exactly who I am. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to go, I thought you liked talking about mm. this stuff. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people say, why, do you, why are you always so negative? And I, I say, man, if a doctor diagnoses a, a severe disease, finally, is that negative? No, that's the first step to getting it fixed. You know, it, it's not a negative thing to, to absolutely point out what's wrong. That's yeah, the that's first step. Right. You know, if you think back to the, the days of the revolution, uh, if there were people, you know, talking that drastically right now, they'd be in prison. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So that could be. It, it takes that kind of attitude, I guess, to make things happen. You know, that wasn't easy. I think it's so easy to forget our history. Um, you know, this, all these things repeat themselves in some way, shape, or form. And David Ray uh, Griffin was saying that the reason that nobody's assassinated him or, or threatened him like that is because that would all of a sudden drive his books to number one on the, on the top seller list. <laughs> well, you know, what I'm afraid of is that, of course, you know, there's the election coming up. Um, and, and you talk to some people, Republican, Democrat, kind of a toss up. But I do kind of feel a little bit of hope with Obama. I really do. Uh, whether it's, you know, just me trying to be optimistic, I don't know. But what I'm afraid of is he'll be the first black president that gets assassinated. Well, and, and that scares the crap out of me. I'm voting, um, I'll probably vote for Obama just so that. I mean, you know, to make sure he gets elected because people need to understand that it's not black versus white, it's rich versus poor, and he's one of the rich ones. He's going to screw us just the same way the other rich guys will. Did you know there's a lawsuit with, uh, he was born in Kenya? Oh, no, really? Bill Berg, yeah, so, so he probably, even if he does get elected, he but may not be able to take the That money. would be funny. Oh, but also, he has an Indonesian citizenship, too. It's crazy. <laughs> You know, Ace Hayes, who had the secret ge government seminar on the cable access channels about 10 years ago, compared, I mean, he made an analogy of our voting cycle. He says, well, we're all mice, and every four years we get together and argue over which cat we're going to elect. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I want the tabby, I want the Siamese, but nobody stops to realize cats eat mice. <laughs> and, you know... So when we're voting for Obama or McCain, we're, we're voting for the peas in the same pod, basically. And just yeah. recently I was asked if I would talk on a, a, a talk show, another one besides mine, that is. And, and I, I pointed out, I said, you probably don't want me on your show because you're a pretty conservative show. And he said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm an anti-imperialist. <laughs> and both McCain and uh, 
uh, Obama are imperialists. They both want to keep 700 military bases out there. They both think that there's something right about being in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, Obama wants to inc increase the troops in Afghanistan, right. and possibly go into and, Pakistan. And so that's it's kind of scary. You know, that's, that's nothing scary. we should be doing. Yeah. Well, at the very least, he's going to be more motivated yeah, than I, anyone else. I think you know that could be stepping up, uh, e including Hillary. You know, he's he's definitely got a lot of uh, people watching to see what happens. Being the first black president, of course, um, you know he has to do something, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, you'd think so. I think that's the hope. You know, he talks about hope. Well, we hope you can do something because. Yeah, um, it would it'd be a shame a if he frustrating, just became you know? another one in a long line of the same old, same old. Well, but you know. hey, we got another call waiting on the line, so I gotta go. Thanks for calling. Nice talking to you guys, and uh, I'll keep watching. Yeah, it's the first and third Saturdays of each month. Perfect. Um, maybe we could exchange info after I hang up. Well, c call them back, and uh, they can take it offline or off okay, air. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you. And uh, is there another caller? Hello, Bill. Oh, is that Jan? No, my name is Sharon. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, sorry about that. Anyway, no, no problem. welcome to the show. They always accuse me of being Jan. Oh. <laughs> well, she's a pretty regular caller, too. Okay. And now, uh, for president, uh, I want to go third party because uh, I'm not going to take that choice of both. These are evil. Yeah. Democrats Very smart. Republicans, we need a total White House. we got to let's clean the house and get everyone out. No encumbrance. Go strictly third party vote. Yeah, right, if, right. If yeah, that's what's definitely needed. Vote against anybody that was in Congress when we went for the Iraq War. <laughs> Which third party candidate are you interested in? Um, actually, Nader's on all of them. I'm hoping. I don't really want him, but I would I'd rather take a Nader than anybody else. I'll tell you, he's been consistently honest, and he's had the most Correct. time tested you know, trials of anybody, and he's passed them all. He's never been corrupted. It, it, it's time for Nader to have. Are you going to go see him uh, Monday at the Baghdad Theater? Um, I'm handicapped, so I cannot get around very easily. Well, hopefully somebody will put that on YouTube or something. Oh, Probably. I would love to see some of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been, what I notice is my telemarketers that call my house, uh -huh. I, before they, after they do their spiel, then I try to talk to them about 9-11. Uh -huh. And the last one I talked to, actually said her brother was an architect, so I gave, gave her the uh, www.ae911truth.org. Oh, yeah. So that That's just... she could get her brother to contact them because it was, he, he needed to do that. I also go on a lot of blogs. I have a good computer, and I have even gone to the debunking blogs. Uh, one debunking, or one blog that I was, it's, it's a debunking that I was on for a while. By the time I got through with my questions and stuff, and trying to get them to look at this stuff from my perspective, or as a very simple way of explanation uh, that we could actually see in our own homes and stuff. By the time I got done, he shut down the blog. I'm wondering if I actually won. Um, and I went go on YouTube or live link, link Leak Live or something, there's that's another one that show videos. Uh -huh. And I noticed that when I get somebody thinking more like, okay, explaining how the, how come the buildings fell down, or the tower, um, I don't understand why they came down. They shouldn't have. Uh, and when I start getting them to understand that, sure, the fire, they... And as NISD says the fire got to a certain peak. And then they turn around and they say, well, when steel's that hot, it can weaken. But see, the fires were that temperature, but the steel never got to that temperature. Yeah, exactly. Then That's very true. It weaken. So if the lower part of the building that had been holding all that weight all those years was holding it and didn't get weakened because the heat didn't touch those, why does it fall down? Right. It just doesn't make sense. It's a basic concept. And, uh, <laughs> so by the time I'm, when I get them to understand that, okay, if you take <coughs> an open fire and in that first, 
certain circumstances there at the at the towers. The fire and heat rise. So from the top up, you can understand where maybe the stuff might have gotten a little warm, such as your furni your furniture and and in your office equipment in the on the floors would have been burning. This they would burn in about twenty minutes in one area and then the fire would gradually go over to another spot. Yeah, like Richard well, Gage was saying. Yeah. The steel would not have hot steel takes there's a factor of time to heat you have to have time fitted in to heat the steel to a uh, heat that would cause it to reach it. But if the fire is moving then the steel isn't going to get hot. That's right. And that's why we call it cold steel, I believe. <laughs> And then when I watch the uh, North Tower, if you actually take a watch that when it begins, the top part of the building tips vertically actually pulverizes oh, yeah. to about oh a third of the height. The north one was the one with the antenna, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. But I mean the right. top part, before the bottom even starts to come down, the top part there actually that's absolutely correct. The top right. starts blowing top up, part eliminating the. That's right. The there goes the pancake driver, excuse. Pile driver. But there's no pile driver. Right. Right. Now, there's no mass to bring down the rest. Then I've had people come back and tell me, well, yeah, but there was an airplane uh, and all that 10,000 meals of jet fuel. Well, I'm not too sure that there was that much jet fuel in it, but that's, that's okay. The jet fuel burns off. Right, mostly outside. The, if, the bill, if the wings got destroyed on the inside, then yes, the, the jet fuel got lots of air at that time, and it just blew up. That's what you saw when that big explosion happened, was most of that jet fuel burning off. And then the <coughs> planes wait. Everybody says, oh, the planes wait. The problem with it is, if the building can hold 50,000 people, then if you figure out the weight of 50,000 people, if the building was at full capacity, <laughs> it ought to hold that over. outweighs that airplane weight. So if the lower half could hold the building with 50,000 people in it, then the lower half should have continued to hold the building. And as the building is coming down from the top and pulverizing, the lower half, it doesn't make sense, it should have held. There's nothing above it to come crashing down on it. And once you see it like that, you can't ever look at those pictures again and see it any other way, can you? Right. <laughs> and then somebody came out, well, see that uh, uh, if the fire, or the, the um, jet fuel up there was still burning. Well, I've seen video where the people were standing in the hole that the plane had gone through, hanging on to um, the beam. Right, that lady, they finally identified her. I don't know what her name is, but That's she's right. testifying right there. That isn't hot. It couldn't have been hot like that. <laughs> but again, of course... And that's where the hot. fire was. Fires right. are hot to people. Yes. Well, uh, we can burn up before that. Uh, the steel beam can burn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, fires do feel hot to us. Well, how about the Pentagon where, you know, they say yeah. that the airplane was yes, disintegrated... <laughs> Vaporized. Yeah, right. Titanium vaporizes. Well, it melts at almost 6,000 right. degrees. Correct. It, no way it did happen. Even so, thermite wouldn't touch titanium. But there so, was a video <laughs> I did watch about that. I've been investigating this for a while. There was a video on that that actually a man went and talked to some of the witnesses that said they saw and took them out and put them in the spot and they actually couldn't see the Pentagon from there. Oh, you're talking about Rob Balsamo from uh, Pilots for 9-11 Truth. Uh, very possible. Yeah, that group, they... they I, I enjoyed that one. They that just one. came out with a brand new video about the Pentagon, and that's got all the latest stuff on it. Oh, yeah. Okay, then, then you know about that one. So, Caller, well, are, you, are you surprised when people can't figure out this very basic, simple ideas, concepts? Well, when I, when I bring up the basic stuff, I can get them to a point where it starts to click. And then they back off. Then you're right. They immediately, all of a sudden, the idea there that, hey, I could be right. Yeah. And they thinking has been wrong. Then they back off. They won't cross, cross the line. And then they come back to me that they don't want to talk anymore and want to leave. 
which yeah. that makes me feel sad. Or yeah. they start going, well, if the government did this, uh, it would take thousands of people. How, how do you explain yeah, this? I hear that so many times. How do you explain, how do you explain where the people in the airplane went? Well, what I... To me, <laughs> then I try to get them to look at Operation Northwest. Because the military can come up with all kinds of good ideas. And then somebody says, well, nobody would have been killed there. If right. Gone, how do we know? When you're bombing one of our ammunitions in our base, how do you know one of our guys won't get killed? And probably would get killed. And it would be cost of doing that, you know. Well, I think 9-11 is definitely another strong flag like that mm -hmm. was approved by Bush. But it is a terrifying concept, isn't it? It's like uh, telling somebody that their grandmother that they loved and made them cookies that she was a mass murderer, and <laughs> it's just like it's hard to go there, it's you hard know. To go there. Yeah, and yeah once absolutely. You it, then what really bothers you is that now you know, and you go, the media is not going up with them. Yeah. Why is the media not doing that? You think don't they care? Why? You know what? You know, I'm, and then I, I'm a little bit older, so Elliot Ness. Where is our Elliot Ness? Right. You know, underneath it's Bill all Olson, of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really a crime uh, that are you know it's it it cuts across party lines it cuts across ideologies it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or whatever this is a, an assault on is America thing. itself yes. and, and I don't understand why people are making a partisan issue out of it if if you're for 9-11 Truth, you're probably a nutcase Democrat, and if you're for the official story, you're a loyal American Republican. Well, that's what they claim, but how do they know what we are? Right. Well, that's the other thing. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't say I'm a 9-11 Truther either, but I see the information, I'm looking for truth, and I try to get everybody I, uh, benefit. I try to look at everything. I have read the NISD report. I have read the 9-11 Commission uh, report, and uh, my problem is, is I try to get both sides their guilt, and I want to make common sense out of this, and the debunker side is not debunking it. Right. It is not making this better. The Commission's report didn't, uh, that, when I read that, and I got halfway through it, I went, boy, if this ain't a, talk about a fiction book. I've read better fiction books than many times. They don't even, yeah, they aren't even believable in their it stories. Right on the first page, it says it's a narrative. Why in the world would you say it's a narrative if you're telling the truth? Yeah, the popular mechanics. A yeah. too. is a tale or a story, a fiction deal. As far as I yeah, it feels like with popular mechanics, you don't want to build their birdcage because, you know. Well, <laughs> well, when I look at popular mechanics, then you have to look at the fact that there's the two people that they, that was on the interview I watched were not experts in anything, <coughs> as far as I could see. <laughs> and they, it was mostly their opinion. Right. Most of the time, they just didn't believe. One was an editor, and the other was a writer. Right, and they don't want to believe anything bad about our government. And they didn't have any counter arguments that were valid no. of it, I mean, and, and in any way. The, um, one of the blogs that I managed to end up, I feel like <coughs> I had to ended up having them take down, <laughs> this will get you, it was a guy that says he was run hard fire, and I don't know if you know about his mm. show, he's one of these, um, uh, I think it's out of Canada though. Hard fire? Hard fire, it's called hard fire, I okay. and his name is Ron something or whatever, I could be wrong, no I'm right about the name, anyway he had a blog that he was said about who he was, and he ended up after I, I know he doesn't admit that I had anything to do with it, but suddenly when I was getting the uh, information about how Building 7 could not come down <laughs> symmetrically, you know, if you, even if you crush one side or one corner. Yeah, if it comes down at all, it's just going to topple. It's, it's not going to. Right, and that came down symmetrically. It would, to me, I tried to explain it to him like, if you had a shoebox on the floor and you jumped on it, uh, <laughs> the size of the shoebox in certain spots would still be standing. You couldn't flatten it down. If you're sitting in a chair, you knock one leg out. 
You don't go straight down. You tip over to one side. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm trying to relate to Yeah, but buildings fall that. straight down. We all know that. We saw it on 9-11. Weren't you watching? <laughs> when, when, like when I tried That's to, what I've had, yeah. had that type of logic used on me. When I try to explain the heat transfer through steel, I have stainless steel silverware. When I put my coffee spoon in my coffee cup, the part of the spoon that I'm holding on to doesn't get that hot. The well, heat don't transfer that fast. Well, that's, no, it actually uh, has, fork, it has a high when thermal I, when you take a fork, conduction. You take a fork, you put your marshmallow on it, and you put that over your uh, candle to roast your marshmallow, taking the rotten marshmallow off with the fork tying, if that's what they call tying, yeah. over the plate and heat that. You can hold that fork an awfully long time before the fork heats up at your hand. Yeah, but no, there's really a, a thing, a technical uh, property called thermal conduction, and, and it is a very high thermal conduction. I've got some more calls waiting that we got to go to, but the thermal conduction is something that welders have to deal with when they're welding. They have to make sure that that big pieces of metal are all uniformly the same temperature, and it takes a long time to get them there. That's but in, in a way, she has a, 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 you know, to go a hundred stories down, though, it's going to take a while. Oh yeah, well, in that way, because you're it's not going to have the heat transfer enough to to actually weaken steel that far, it, but they would have the point to, is that right. it, it, the heat wicks away so quick wicks that it away. won't weaken. Right, right. But here's the, the clincher on that. They had an over-design factor of 20. That means that even, and you know, all their excuses boil around the half strength mark. It got hot enough to lose half of its strength. That means it was only 10 times stronger than it needed to stand up, you know, which, which means their story is false even if you give them the 90% weakening. Well, anyway, we got another caller. Thanks for calling. Thank, thanks for calling, Sharon, if you're listening on the TV. <laughs> Call again. And, uh, well, we, I hear the phone ringing. I know yeah, we got calls. Funny. Oh, there's somebody. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Barrett. Oh, Barrett, go ahead. Yeah, I'm a local person. Um, I'm an Oregonian. Um, that doesn't matter. Um, what does matter is yesterday morning, I looked out my window, and it was foggy. But there was a clearing right in front of my window into the sky. I saw 15 chemtrails. Yeah, it was a lot. They, they turned into a whole bunch of clouds. Huh. I, you know what I think they're doing? I mean, call me paranoid. Uh, I saw a documentary not too long ago. I, I only watch cable access. I do turn to, to Fox once in a while to listen to the BS. Yeah, for masochistic they're purposes. They're talking about man-to-man, -man, person -to person crime when the real criminals are running amok. Right. John Lennon said this. And you know, he's dead. Um, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, we have a problem on our hands. We're going through a um, financial, same way in Rome, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Well, they're doing their... They're doing the best they can to transfer the rest of the money to their coffers yeah, so before they... We're on our own <laughs> here, like Hurricane Katrina, they, they said, oh, you know, the elite, talking to the elite, they said, okay, God cleared them out, we didn't have to. Yeah. But, you know, they can change the freaking weather, excuse me, but they can change the weather with this, this, this cloud cheating they're doing. And... Uh, what scares me is uh, people don't even look up in the sky. Most right. People. And you show them, you tell them to look up, and they, they're still clueless. I know yesterday was the worst I've seen it. Did you notice that, oh, Bill? I, I wasn't, yeah, it was, I wasn't yeah. looking up. You weren't looking up. <laughs> it was, like, amazing. I've never seen right so now, many. I don't see any out there. Yeah, but well, yesterday. Well, you know, was... I, I'm one of those people that you're going to have to convince that every time you see a you know a vapor trail that it's something sinister. And just because a lot of people have found articles about, you know, injecting silver iodide and other stuff into cloud vapor to make it rain, weather control, in other words. Wh when people say weather control, it immediately implies that you really have control of the weather. Sure. But, well, I mean, yeah. the, you know, well, it Bill, should be weather influence or Bill, something. Bill, do you think they're spraying organic herbs on us? I don't know <laughs> if they're spraying anything on us. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I haven't seen anybody come forward with, you know, here's a chemical analysis of something that just fell on my house or something like that. I've never seen anybody do that. 
and I don't know where they get the idea, you know, there are things in the sky, therefore it's raining chemicals on you us. Know, I, UFOs, okay, let me, let, me, let me touch on that for a moment. Okay. Uh, just for a second. <laughs> UFOs, all right? Um, say there's life on other planets and the universe, which I believe there is. Sure, I, I do too. That doesn't mean they're the here, though. <laughs> the vastness of space is what keeps them and us from uh, reaching them. Right. Think about the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. Okay, if you're if you're talking to a star that's three light years away, okay, to say hello, you gotta wait three years for them to get it, and then three years for them to say hello back. Yeah. And can you imagine traveling physically? I don't know. Is it possible? Mm. Infinity is huge. I mean, it's bigger than anything you're imagining. <laughs> By definition. <laughs> anyway, I think so. I'm gonna give some other callers a chance. I just want to bring up the notion that. This government, you know, anybody out there who's watching, they're pro I'm probably preaching to the choir. Well, um, you, you know, we so need to just wake up people and get them. If they have ideas, call in and tell us what you think. You know, yes, what? Indeed. how do we get everybody's attention? How do we get the attention of people well, besides you know, us? You, doing? you know how I found my epiphany? Was, was just flipping through the channels at night. I got tired of watching the commercials, and I just touched on it. And I listened to, I, I don't know if it was Alex or Jim Lockhart or who it was that I heard first, but they started making sense. Right. And I started to not like the commercials. <laughs> and I, yeah. Yeah. You said just turn your buddies on to the right channels. Well, There's I think, the, the yeah, the key is. I think they should cover the whole state of Oregon here. They're making some sort of noises about trying to get other carriers to carry the cable access channels, yeah, but I mean, there's, there's the nothing point. positive yet. Hey, we've got a, we've got more callers on the line. Thank you. And uh, thanks. thanks for calling, Barrett. Um, okay, next caller. Hello, caller. Uh, hello. Oh, there you go. Hey, how are you? Fine. What's up? What's your name? What I I'm Bill, and this is Tim. What's that again? Who did the 9-11 attacks? Who do we think did it? Well, it's we don't really know who did it, but we do know that J Dick... <laughs> okay, that's that's where you go Bill O'Reilly on him. Shut up, that mic! <laughs> no, but anyway, it's a legitimate <laughs> question, and even if he was a jerk, no, no offense. It's a, who's at the top of the pyramid? That's who did it. Right. We, the and banksters and... The same people that are orchestrating and, yeah. the economic collapse did it. That's mm -hmm. who, and, There's a it, shadow and who are they? Yeah. Well, you know, that remains to be found out. Right. Uh, it's definitely following an elitist agenda to try to uh, collapse the economy of the country and change us over to the North American Union and the, and the Amero currency. And before they can do that, we have to completely crash. And this bailout isn't a bailout. It's it's a reimbursement of the the crooks that cheated us. And once we have them fully reimbursed, the crash will continue. Uh, so, anyway, we have another. Any more calls? Hey, all right. I like that one. I can. I can. <laughs> let's see. What was it? I, I didn't understand the words, but I could dance to it. So. <laughs> oh, there's a caller. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing? Pretty good. I just, I just want to ask you, uh, who, who do you put the blame on for the, for the crisis we're going through right now? <laughs> you, which, the economic the, crisis? Or the... E economic. The, the economic whole thing? crisis. Yeah. Uh, Wall Street financiers, the, the, the people who are on the boards of directors and the people who are the CEOs, the people who are, you know, absolutely cheating the system. Uh, that's pretty vague, I guess, but. Yeah, I, I'll have a, one more question. I, I, this might sound a little bit crazy, but you know the 2012, all the theories on that. Right. Oh, about, about the end of the world? Kill 
<laughs> well, you know, yeah, the funny well. thing is, I, I don't particularly see any difference between Obama and McCain, although M Obama does have... There's a big... I, I think I agree yeah, with him. We, there is a difference we, we, between the two because people love Obama. Very few people love McCain, so that's very... Why, why? Why? It's because hard. Why? Why can't they love McCain? Why? Because McCain can't <laughs> have that. Why? Because McCain don't enjoy Go ahead and... chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but... Obama doesn't have a plan. That's what I'm saying. Well, let's put it this way. There isn't anybody running that, that agrees with the Constitution. Uh, you know, if, if somebody ran that wanted to uphold the Constitution, I'd vote for him in a country second. But the Democrats and Republicans are not running anybody like you that. For, you forgot the third-party candidates, Bill. That's what we, the, well, we yeah. Bring I, back yeah. white America. <laughs> the white brotherhood. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're doing your best to be a, a, a heckling caller, but... <laughs> white brotherhood, white America, we are gonna make it. We're gonna make it through this crisis. Well, it's not about. I, I, I got news black, for you. Talk like that is 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 reject too. I don't agree with that at all. And and I, if you're talking about having a brotherhood in in celebrating my skin color, I totally reject that. It's it's ignorance. It's it's stupidity to talk like that. Um, it's not about color. It's about money. It's about economy. It's about it's about rich versus poor. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand anything. So I don't want to hear any more about this white brotherhood crap. That's nothing but crap. And I'm putting that right out right now. Preach it, brother. Also. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> there <on>. you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, Reverend Billy D. Right here. Right. Here. And I say to you that if you're talking about white racism, you're a fool. If you're talking about black racism, you're a fool. If you're talking about the rich putting us down, then you got some smarts. Hey, we got a call. <laughs> but let's see if the call can follow up what we just did. <laughs> Yeah, that now that's Jan. Oh, all right, it is Jan. They said okay. caller before me that they must have given up on the other guy. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the other, <laughs> we've had some. It's a pretty scary world out there, guys. And, and some know, of them called. We just got um, so much hate going on and so much anger, and people don't even know what they should be angry at, okay? <laughs> like uh, picking out these little issues and these populations and. How dare they have a work center and whatever, and it just is making me crazy. Um, Bill did such a good job before that last call of explaining about who did this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll never know exactly who they are, but they're not just in this government. You guys know that. And this whole, everything is just moving right along. They're moving right along with their agenda. I'm kind of along for the ride. I don't feel like I have much influence, but I want to go down on record in this show that, you know, hey, I've been against it the whole way, even if I, you know, blub, 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 blub. You have put on one heck of go a down. fight, and I really appreciate what you've done. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate you and everything will not believe it and whether it's because they're spiritually weak um, or just children that never grew up I think it's the spiritually weak thing I mean look 30 percent still approve of Bush I mean what at, it's not that what, high is it 30 percent that's what I heard mm -hmm. but well, I mean they're the pe they're the group that no matter <laughs> what happens Bush could go around chopping people's heads off on TV with you know and, and they'd still be for him. raping a nun yeah rape like. a nun or <laughs> <laughs> small children whatever and <laughs> it wouldn't matter <laughs> That's that Palin thing is some scary. Of us believe, and some of us will accept it and move farther and dare look underneath some layers because it's really ugly under there and it's not pleasant. But what it what it brings you around to is that you then become responsible, and that's what I think people don't want to do. Right. They if they know about it, they have to fix it. Right. <laughs> 
It's scary. It is a very frightening thing. Well, think about it. all your life. Every time you use your brain, you're put down for it. You know, you're you're ins insulted or you're called uh, a conspiracy nutcase or whatever. If you if you come up with a conclusion, anything that's out of mainstream, right. they, they right. don't even stop to say, "Hey, you made a, a logical error here, and here's what your mistake is." And you know, think well, about this, and you'll be back on track. Or no, right. you're you're a terrorist. Right. Well, right. and that's you part know. of their And as I look back on it, um, I was not taught to think. In fact, my senior yep. year, I had to take um, um, oh, an events class, current events, okay? 1967, never once was Vietnam mentioned. Now, you know, no. that's a long time ago to be in school and have stupid talk to you. And <clears throat> so, you know, it's like they want us to be stupid. So they can take over, so they can do whatever they're doing, and they're doing a good job. And huh. uh, somebody said, and they're right, they started the revolution. They started it. Right. So now what are we going to do? And yeah, it's an individual thing, and yes, we enlighten as many people as we can in your show and other shows, and Tim showing up, and Tim doing all the emails that I got letting me know when meetings were. I mean, you guys are actually out of your comfort zone doing something. And if you look at it in the grand scheme, it may not seem like much, but it's something. And I think yeah. it counts for something somewhere. Yeah, every little bit helps. Everybody doing something, it'll all incrementally make a difference. And, right. you know, thanks for calling. I really well, appreciate thank it. Thank you, and thank you for thanks. your integrity. Oh. That comes without charge. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see ya. We have one more caller. One more caller? Yeah. Oh, there you go. How's it going? Pretty good. Say, uh, you know, I'm watching this whole financial situation unfold, and I really find it ironic how, you know, it, it took us, you know, several days to get this, you know, one page uh, of you know, from Henry Paulson to almost, what, several several hundred pages. Right, uh, well, the first one they tried was only, what, four pages or three pages? And that, mm -hmm. that got voted down. <laughs> well, you know, this, they, was an, this was an American issue, and now suddenly this is a global issue, and the World Banks are following exactly the, the thing that Henry Paulson is proposing. They're all giving money to their banks. Yeah, well, what yeah. they recognize, I, my, I personally think it's the collapse of this crony capitalism or, or you know cheating capitalism whatever you want to call it they, they people get upset when I say it's the collapse of capitalism because they say this isn't really capitalism well okay but it's what everybody bragged about all the time I was growing up about how great it was and it turns out that it was the biggest crime perpetu or you know perpetrated on the on the world. But in reality, yeah. we haven't had a free market, have we? We've it never had any sort of a, a capitalist is, free market. Yeah. It's always right. been controlled by the military, usually our military. Right. And that's not a free market. That's that's cheating. And we've always cheated the the world. And what's happening is it's catching up to us. Uh, you know, what part of the exponential functions don't you understand? Right, right. <laughs> Even how they how they passed the bill, it's supposed to the bills, what I understood in junior high school, has to go through the House of Representatives. And they they voted no, and then the Senate voted yes. Well, you can't do that. You yeah, have to start the, the House. They so reverse the they order. They reverse the order, and they it's and they do it out in front of us, it's criminals. Right, and yeah. we sit back and we go, meh, meh. Right. You know. <laughs> hey, uh, what was so ironic about uh, the Tower Seven going down? What do you guys feel that was in that tower that they had to pull it? Well, it didn't. Oh, what? Those are two different questions. What was ironic about it really was the fact that there was no cause for it to go down. It wasn't hit by a plane. It wasn't even hurt by the debris from falling in falling towers nearby. So, well, that being said, uh, it was kind of a coincidence that oh, you know, in the the Security Exchange Commission had hundreds of open cases against things like you know people that were involved with Enron and people involved with Qualcomm and the other 
fraud cases out there, and all of a sudden, all that evidence is gone, and it's those gone. cases are gone, and all those people are off scot free. There's also gold you know, underneath it too. That some say that, but that was. We also have a, a handful. I mean, you know, five, ten more security agencies in that building, and they all had ongoing cases. You know, what a coincidence that they're all gone, and isn't that nice for the p people being prosecuted? Similar thing happened with the Murrah building in Oklahoma. The, there was cases about the uh, Waco bomb, the Waco and Ruby Ridge. Yeah, now, and that was if, if you haven't been understood. thinking about it, the Murrow building in Oklahoma City was the test that the government did to see if they could get away with collapsing one of their own buildings and blaming it on somebody else. Right. And in spite of the fact that the news had you know, on camera, the bomb squad coming in to get unexploded ordnance that was still in the building, somehow that story disappeared and it was then a lone terrorist who blew it up with a, mm -hmm. with a one truck bomb outside the building. We, right. we know that didn't happen. It was the government that inside job again and that's in the history hole now. What? Hey, three more hey, minutes. Yeah, we got just three minutes. The, before we get go, what's the next shoe to drop here in this whole cycle of events? Uh, the October surprise. What's the October surprise? I don't know. Well, that's historically uh, some event that happens just before the November election to make everybody say, well, I'm going to vote for this guy or that guy or whatever. And, uh, you know, we're, we're th one of the theories was that there would be a crisis anywhere in the world, and because of the signing paper that Bush signed, he can declare martial law, even if it's in some other part of the world. Right. And that's one thing that... I think it could be bioterrorism. They might put out some kind of disease, and then they'll shut down the cities. And the bioterrorism thing is kind of a bad one for them to do because the last bioterrorism, the anthrax, was traced back to the government lab. We right, know that right. was an inside job too. Right. Yeah. So they'll. Okay. they'll you guys, before I leave, uh, you know, I had I, I happened to walk outside yesterday and notice all the chemtrails. Right. That's what you were talking uh, about, Tim. I was just talking to somebody. I was like, "Look at all of that, you guys. Now come on." And we took a telescope and looked up close. Those are not commercial jets. They're unmarked white jets. Yeah, they're always oh, white. Really? They're always white in color. Well, you yeah. know, you're, you're adding more circumstantial evidence to the thing. I'm still a, a skeptic on that. I don't believe just because well, you see... If vapor trail, it would evaporate. Yeah. Well, they, I've seen vapor trails all my life, and well, some of them do, some of them don't. But think about it, Bill. Like, you're in the wintertime, you, you take your breath. You can see your breath, but it goes away, right? Same with the vapor trail up, the, up there. The same. I'm not away. sure that's analogous, but anyway. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's as easy to see as World Trade Center 7 coming down. But <laughs> just, be, just because you see it, you know, it's a big leap from there it is and it doesn't go away to therefore they're spraying deadly chemicals on us for some nefarious purpose. And remember, they'll be spraying their own children by doing that. So. I'm going to take some samples and give them to you guys. You guys yeah. Have a good night. That, you'll be okay. the first one to do that, so do it. <laughs> we got one minute left and we're going out. Uh, if they aren't playing the credits now, they should be. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, if, another call? I hear them going nuts in the control room, but... There's some good calls, I think, today. We had a lot of good calls, and...